hey guys how's it going well it is another totally rainy windy day here in uh, Huntsville and uh, well are you ready to journey into that no man's land again the uh, space between reality and fantasy and between insanity and sanity you know what I'm talking about the, cra the cheap Craigslist car selling zone is what we'll call it well uh, so I still had this car this little Focus that I'm sitting in still had it for sale for over a week now and I'm holding my ground you know on the price I'm not dropping my price I think it's fair so maybe maybe it is maybe it isn't but I'm gonna stick with it so still uh, encountering these different people that uh, have shown some interest in this car and uh, I guess the last person that I showed it to was on Wednesday of this week. This is Sunday. So it's taken me that long after that encounter to be willing to make a video about this to keep my stress level down. Th this person, last one, this took the cake. This is <clears throat> this this guy was the king of all Craigslist flakes. There'll be another no other one better. Every every Craigslist flake after this guy is going to be trying to be as good as he was at it. And I'll tell you about him in a minute. So, uh, so anyway, I guess you know I say they really have beat me up on this car. They people have been trying to get it too cheap, and uh, and uh, you know they've I've been asked a lot of questions that uh, not really. Uh, well, a couple things. They're not really relevant to a car this old, 15 years old. Uh, as in, do I have maintenance records of my original owner? And things of that nature, which they're not bad questions, and I don't know people asking them, but um, it's kind of along the lines of you would ask these questions if you were buying a two-year-old Altima or a Camry or something like that. If you're given... Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars for a used car. Sure, you'd want to know all that, and you want service records, and you'd want so no, you know, you would know, you would want to know these things. But a fifteen-year-old car for two thousand dollars, a little bit less. I, mean, uh, I never got service records from one of them. Uh, ooh, the wind's blowing. I said before, and I say it again: if you want the weather to change here in North Alabama, just give it a couple days, and it will. Uh, less than a week ago it was 19 degrees today it's almost 60 in thunderstorms so they've been beating me up with that I've been asking questions about the service records and I've been asking questions about the timing belt has the time belt been changed and I know where that's going because that you know people know enough to know about a timing belt which is good I've promoted changing timing belts of course but they don't know enough about these cars to know that they're not an interference engine if time belt breaks it's just like a Mazda it just quits and you put another one on it and continue on your merry way just like I did on that red protege so they've been asking me those kind of questions that's not that's no problem I don't mind answer questions but I've been getting all the low ball offers and I've been being you know the, the continuing text messages with will you take such and such money today and I'll say this again guys if you're the one person that does that we're on to you. We know you don't have the money. We know that. So, you know, you, you can you can just pass on from that. Quit, quit wasting everybody's time. But so uh, that's been that. And then I guess I've kind of been, you know, I'm kind of a person that tends to uh, take kind of a pleasure in exposing the human condition. You know, the things that, about people that are human nature that they do and and they don't necessarily like to be pointed out to them but uh, you know I guess what I've gotten away from gotten taken away from that on on selling these old cars and stuff is that people largely uh, well for one thing I never knew people were this crazy I, I don't I never did now now I know why I see all the news headlines that I do People getting stuck in chimneys, trying to break into somebody's house, stuck in walls, falling off, you know, just, and I've just realized that, and I realize how much people these days are 
obsessed with inaction, which means not doing something. Uh, people want to talk about things. They want to, you know, think about it. They want to enjoy the fantasy of maybe what they could do. But when it comes down to doing something like, here I go again on my camera thing, sorry. Uh, when it comes down to, you know, actually doing something, they don't want to do it. And that's what I've had with this. I've had people, there's a lady's been text messaging me, and she's come out once. It was going to come out twice after dark. You look at this car, and then she's going to look at it once, and then she's going to drive it like nearly a week later. And now, while I was out, while I go eating some lunch, I thought, well, for the heck of it, I'll just text message her and say, ask her where, what happened to her and her friend that wanted the car. So she texts me back and says, well, I'm at work. I can't talk right now. I'll get back with you on it later after six. And so this is like the upshot of this is like I'm having this kind of this, not a relationship relationship, but this weird car selling relationship with this lady for over a week now, somebody I don't know, and, you know, she's done everything but buy the damn car, you know? So I have to think to myself, where are we going with this? What's, where is this, where is this leading, where is this journey leading to? Where is the journey that this lady and I am on, where is it leading to? Is, are we just going to do this forever? Is this going to be one of these things where every week or so she comes by or text messages me about this car and wants stuff I still have it? You know, she's talking to her friend about it. It's always, like I said, it's always this mysterious third party. It's like him, her, the friend, the mother-in-law, the son, the daughter, the uncle, the grandfather, the brother-in-law. Some person, some person that you never, ever, ever see in person. It's like the teacher on Charlie Brown. Remember the one who used to go, wah, 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 wah. It's like you never see that teacher, but you hear of her or hear her. Like the Wizard of Oz, you know, so just it's weird, man. It makes you It's like a subculture or something. I know I'm just kinda of rambling, but I've I've like I said, I've never I don't normally encounter people like this in daily life and I, it just kinda traumatizes me. I'm I'm thinking, you know. Where did we where do we go away from you know, why are we over on this side of the fence on where we're just talking about things and discussing it and asking some questions and then planning for a week later when these people, the rare people, one or two that actually is serious, will just come to your house, bring you some money, give you the money, you give them the keys, they leave. You know, where are we, what is this subculture that's going on over here? I mean, is this, is this, I don't know, I'm lost, man. I don't. I don't know. These people are weird. Weird, 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 but anyway, to wrap this up, that's that's what's been going on. It's still just kind of uh, just a revolving door of people. Oh, well, I'm going to tell such and such about it. Yeah, well, you take this for just uh, okay, so. If I don't get any firm action on this in the next few days I'm probably just gonna put on eBay I used to sell cars on eBay all the time it works well because you get you totally get away from all this stupid stuff dealing with Craigslist people because it's more regulated and people have to be serious they have a feedback you know it's just, it just gets away from all this bullshit so I'll give it a little while longer if it doesn't won't get anything here I'll put it on eBay so so let me tell you about the guy that was from last Wednesday. Now, before I continue with that, I'll just say that uh, this is partially my own fault because I broke one of my cardinal rules of Craigslist car selling, and that is you never, ever take a car to meet somebody, ever. Because I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're a millionaire, I don't care where it's at, I don't care. I don't care what you say. That has never, ever, ever worked for anybody when somebody asks you to bring them a car to look at. Because when you do that, let me tell you this real quick, when you do that, you're on their territory. See, wherever it's at, even if, you know, it doesn't matter where it's at, but it, you're on their territory. So you give them the upper hand. And normally it's that you give them the upper hand to uh, screw you over somehow. So I broke that cardinal rule. So this guy's wife 
send me a text message again they won't call you in person because they're scared to so it says uh, my husband and I would like to look at your car uh, we're not in town we live out of town but he's coming to work at and I'm gonna say it I don't care I'm so pissed off that guy or was so pissed off this guy I don't care if his information's out on the internet at all but uh, we'd like to meet you over on Shields Road, which is in uh, northwest Huntsville, over here, northeast Huntsville, about 12 miles from here. Uh, my husband's going to go into work at 5 p.m., and he'd like to, if you could, wouldn't mind to run it over there, he'd like to take a look at it. So, you know, first of all, I sent her a text message and says, I said, no can do. I said, I don't, I don't drive cars to meet people. You know, I said, that's rush hour traffic. I don't want to do it. No. So about 25 minutes later, the phone rings. And it's a different phone number. And he says, well, the other, my, my wife sent you a message about this. And he said, I'd really like to look at it. Check it out. I need a car. Ooh. We're blowing away, man. I'd really like to look at it. You know, I really need a car. And, you know, I'm just sitting there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard all that. Yep, 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 yep. So he says, and I'm going to be over. He said, I'm coming in to work. He said, I'll be over on Shields Road. I'm going to say that again. He works on Shields Road. And, uh, well, he said Shields Road. And I said, what's on Shields Road? He said, well, that's where I work. So, anyway, I thought to myself, well, okay, what the heck, you know. I'll give it a shot. It's not that far away. It won't cost me anything to go up there, I guess. And I said, well, I said, you know what? I said, I've had, I told him this. I said, I said, I've had people kicking tires and stuff. He said, I don't normally take cars to show people. And he says, well, I, you know, I, if it's good, if I can just drive it up and down the street a little bit, he said, he said, I'll buy it from you. He said, I heard that one all the time. Oh, they, they, they will do this stuff. This, the, yeah. So anyway, uh. I said, all right. So we made some little arrangements where to meet and stuff. We're going to meet at the Arby's on the Shields Road over there. So anyway, I roll on over there, and I get there, and he's already there. So, you know, I'm going to tell you guys something that sounds like it's an insult. And it's not really. It's not really trying to put people down, but um, there are people that are not very... Uh, they're not able to discern things very well but I happen to be one of them I'm very uh, uh, oh it's a text message maybe my car sold they're coming right now to buy it uh, well where am I going with this I'm, I'm pretty pragmatic and I'm pretty cautious and I can usually tell people pretty quick when I see him and this guy I was driving a little Mazda white Mazda Tribute and he's an all right, a normal looking person you know but I could tell right away before I even got out of my car that I was not dealing with somebody that was very sharp because he sits there he's just sitting there and he's back then and he's looking at me like this and like I get I start to get out of my car like he's not even getting out like well maybe you're somebody else driving a green focus maybe you're not the guy that I'm supposed to meet so I'm like, you know, and uh, he gets out and he's looking at his hands, his pockets and stuff. So he asks me questions, does not raise the hood whatsoever, doesn't look under it whatsoever, doesn't look at the tires, doesn't look at anything mechanical. That's another bad sign. That's somebody, you know, that's a good one right there. So he asked me a bunch of questions, you know, and they're not really good questions. So he drives it up and down the road, up and down the highway run some of my gas out and uh, you know and I'd already thought about this I thought to myself all right this dude's gonna go work at five o'clock what's he gonna do if he buys a car you know and so I just what I decided is I said well let's get him on a test drive and get him done with his test drive and if he wants it he can run me back home here and just cruise on back up and then I'll let him and his wife work that deal out so Anyway, so he gets back and he says, "Well, I, I like it." He says, "I'll buy it." He says, "The only thing here we go, here we go. Here's the here's where it came out that this dude wasn't firing on all cylinders." 
In other words, if you want the official word for somebody like that, it's a fucking dumbass, is what it is. But he's he's sitting there, standing there, we're standing there, just you know. Okay, now what? He says, "Well, I'd, I'd buy it." He said, "But I've got to be at work at five. I said, "Well, I'm not trying to get you in trouble, but I said, uh, "Can you not just call them and slip in just a little bit late? Tell them you're gonna be a little bit late." And he says. Well, they've got a point system and blah, 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 and they're just not too, you know, good on this. So, in other words, he, he works one of these factory jobs where uh, they've got a bunch of unreliable people and have to basically force them to, to get to work on time. I've been in that situation. I know exactly what that's about. Uh, so, I was like, okay. So, get this, guys. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it if you were there. Ugh. That's why it's taking me all this time to even want to talk about it. So we're standing there in this parking lot with our, you know, with our hands crossed like this, facing each other. And he literally stands there for like 45 minutes, 45 seconds to a full minute making this noise. Um, uh, and then he looks at his phone and says, and finally says, well, I don't know what to do. Um, you know, so what am I supposed to do? You said you're gonna buy the car, dude. You had me over here, so he's just there, just um, uh. So you know, look, I'm not gonna ever would never be violent towards anybody. I, I joke around like that, but uh, if I was a violent person, I tell you what, I could just knock this dude out right then, one one hit, one hit. I can light him out. And then I would have been thrown in jail, I'm sure. But uh, so I said, "Well, look, man," I said, "I'm not trying to be rude, but I said, you know, you should have planned this out. You got to think about this stuff." And he's like, "Well, yeah, I, I, I know. I just, uh, you know, I'd, I'd take it if I could, you know." <laughs> I got to stay calm here because it's it actually made my stomach hurt. That's how mad I was. Oh man, he got called every name in the book, and I sent him a text message after I got down the road. It ripped him good, and so look. Let's hope for the good of our society and our country that there are not many people that are utter stupid, freaking unintelligent failures of a human being like this guy is. If you can't even work something like that out in your mind and plan ahead, that far ahead. And unfortunately, that's really typical about today's society, you know. People people don't think, they don't think, they use their brains. So I went back home, and I'll tell you what, I would never, here's an old saying goes, guys, and you need to live by this if you can. You need to forgive people for being stupid, for being morons, for being idiots, for being dumbasses, for being crooks, whatever their problem is, and there are many, you need to forgive them for it because as humans we're supposed to forgive our fellow man for things like that. But nowhere, no how is it said you ever have to forget it. So I guarantee you if there's anything in my power that I can prevent that guy from ever doing something like that to somebody else, you know, if I catch him looking at somebody else's car, and I know this is far-fetched, I know it is, but I will go to the ends of the earth prevent that to screw him out of it I promise you I will I will never forget it and I will never forget that from anybody that does that kind of crap so don't do it don't do it if you're only used to using about a third of your brain at any one time when you go look at a car or something and you're taking somebody else's time up you try to somehow get the other half of your brain fired up enough to to figure it out what you're going to do so anyway, that was the worst Craigslist, the, the king of the Craigslist flakes. So there will never be another one any better than him. He took the cake. So anyway, I'm going to turn this off and check this uh, useless text message I'm sure I got. So uh, I will talk to you guys in another video. See you now.